Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, all the candles of our Advent wreath are now lighted. We are now on the fourth and the last Sunday of Advent. The coming of Jesus is very near. May we be ready to welcome Him. And let us also prepare ourselves to welcome Jesus as He comes to us in this Eucharist. Let us humbly acknowledge our sins and let us entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. I confess 
to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may, by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Thus says the Lord, you, Bethlehem Ephrata, too small to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient times. Therefore the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth has born, and the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord his God. And they shall remain, for now his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth. He shall be peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken from your throne upon the cherubim, shine forth. Rouse your power, and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine, and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In a holocaust and sin offerings, you took no delight. Then I said, As I written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come down to you, O God. First he says, Sacrifices and offerings, holocaust and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. 
These are offered according to the law. Then he says, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste, to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, as we draw close to Christmas, our readings this fourth and last Sunday of Advent prepares us by bringing us back to the simplicity of the first Christmas. The first Christmas was very simple, and our readings show this to us. Where was Jesus born? Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And according to the prophet Micah in our first reading today, Bethlehem is too small to be among the clans of Judah. Kaya inaawit natin kapag Pasko yung O Little Town of Bethlehem. Dahil totoo, maliit lamang ang Bethlehem. And yet, from this small, insignificant little town, the ruler of Israel will come forth. Hindi nagmula si Jesus sa Jerusalem, sa dakilang lunsod, kung saan nang gagaling ang mga hari at mga propeta. Ang pinili ng Diyos na pagmumulan niya 
isang maliit na lugar. O little town of Bethlehem. And in our gospel today, we heard the story of the visitation. Our gospel is about two women. And in the Jewish culture, women are insignificant. Kaya nga nung nagpakain si Jesus ng libo-libong mga tao, sabi sa Ibanghelyo, there were 5,000 men, not counting women and children. Lalaki lang ang binibilang. Yung mga babae at mga bata, hindi binibilang dahil hindi mahalaga. And yet, our gospel this Sunday talks of two women, both beneficiaries, receivers of God's grace. Elizabeth, who was old and barren, matanda at baog, and yet now is carrying a child in her womb. And Mary, a simple lady, from a simple town of Nazareth, isang lugar din na walang halaga. Later on in the Gospel of John, Nathanael would even ask, Is there anything good that comes from Nazareth? Mukhang may stereotype sila sa mga nanggagaling sa Nazareth. And yet, from Mary, will come forth the Savior. Kaya nga ang bati ni Elizabeth kay Maria, bukod kang pinagpala sa babaing lahat, at pinagpala din naman yung dinadala mo sa iyong sinapupunan. Totoo namang pinagpala, totoong mapalad si Maria, dahil isa lamang siyang ordinaryong dalaga, at sino ba naman siya? para piliin ng Diyos para maging ina ng tagapagligtas. Isang babae ang pinili ng Diyos para bigyang pag-asa ang kanyang bayan. Isang babae ang itinaas ng Diyos para magdala sa kanyang sinapupunan ng tagapagligtas ng mundo. Ganyan kumilos ang Diyos doon sa mga hindi pinapahalagahan, doon sa mga ordinaryo at simple. It is through this insignificant, simple, and ordinary lady, Mary, that will give birth to the Savior of the world. In a male-dominated society, God chose a woman. And in our second reading today, we heard about the mystery of the Incarnation. When God became man, He assumed our human nature our human body, nagkaroon siya ng katawan na katulad natin. And by assuming our human flesh, Jesus, the Son of God, humbled Himself. He became a small, weak baby, powerless and dependent on others. He became vulnerable he became like us in everything but sin. Yan ang kapakumbabaan ng Diyos na nang yakapin niya ang ating pagkatao, niyakap niya ang lahat sa ating pagkatao liban sa kasalanan. Nagpakumbaba siya na maging katulad natin. My dear brothers and sisters, Today, we are reminded 
of how God works in our lives in simplicity, in humility, in ordinariness, and in silence. Ganyan kumilos ang Diyos. Because for God, true greatness is found in simplicity and humility. Today, we ask ourselves, do we give value to simplicity and ordinariness? Do we give value to silence and insignificance? Our world has become too complicated. Our lives too are very complicated. Yung ating taste, yung ating lifestyle, yung ating uri ng pamumuhay naging masyado ng komplikado. Yung ating mga pagpili, gusto natin yung mga grand, glamorous, and pompous things. Kapag simple, ayaw natin. Gusto natin yung makintab. What glitters entices us. What glitters catches our attention. Gusto natin yung mga dakilang bagay. Pero tinuturo sa atin ng Panginoon ang tunay na dakila makikita sa mga simpleng bagay. Sabi nga ni Pope Francis, simple is better. Sa kapayakan, doon natin nakikita ang pagkilos ng Diyos. Do we give value to simplicity, to ordinariness, to silence, and to insignificance? Even our way of celebrating Christmas has become too complicated. Kaya kapag panahon ng Pasko, pagod na pagod tayo. Kapag panahon ng Pasko, ubos ang lahat ng pinag-ipunan natin. Kapag panahon ng Pasko, bumibigat ang timbang natin. E sino ba naman nagsabi na kapag Pasko, kailangang bago ang lahat? Bago ang damit, bago ang sapatos, bago ang gamit. Sino ba naman na nagsabi na kapag Pasko, dapat mag-shopping tayo ng mag-shopping? Sino ba naman na nagsabi na kapag Pasko, dapat nag-uumapaw ang pagkain? We have made Christmas so complicated. That is probably why we miss the point of Christmas. Because Christmas is just very simple. God works in simplicity. And God reveals His greatness in simplicity. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, as we draw close to Christmas, let us recover the real essence of Christmas that is found in simplicity. Let us see God in simple things. Let us see God in ordinary people. Let us see God in insignificant events and moments of our life. Kahit sa simpleng pagluluto, sa simpleng paglilinis ng bahay, pag-aalaga sa ating mga anak, pamamalansya o paglalaba, makita nawa natin ang Diyos. Kahit sa ating simpleng kwentuhan, marinig nawa natin ang Diyos. Sa mga taong hindi pinakikinggan, sa mga taong ayaw nating pakinggan, sa mga taong hindi natin gusto at kinaiinisan natin, makita nawa natin ang Diyos. Sa simpleng bagay, sa mga simpleng tao, 
magpaparamdam ang Diyos sa atin. Doon natin makikita ang kanyang kadakilaan. For after all, when He came on the first Christmas night, He came as a simple little baby wrapped in a simple swaddling clothes, lying in a simple manger with Joseph and Mary, simple people, on a simple, quiet, and dark night. Isn't that how the first Christmas happened? My dear brothers and sisters, there is nothing wrong in celebrating a simple Christmas. In fact, if we celebrate Christmas simply, we will experience the true joy of God's visitation. Please stand. Let us all together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. For the salvation of the world, Christ came to do His Father's will. In her trust in God, Our Lady conformed herself to that same will. Let us unite in prayer, accepting the will of our Father. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ, obedient to His Father, may guide all members of the Church to trust in God's promises. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ, our peace, may silence the thunder of strife and war at this time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That Christ, who lived so humbly among us, may draw us closer to the poor and lonely and neglected in the Christmas season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ, blessed fruit of the virgin's womb, may teach us to love and honor his mother in our homes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That Christ, the shepherd of his people, may bring the departed into his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us offer to the Lord our own petitions. Let us also remember the people who need our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Almighty God, your Son came to do your will, to make all things new. May your prayers extend his kingdom of mercy, peace, and justice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our collection for this Mass will be given to our brothers and sisters who were affected by the recent typhoon 
in Central Philippines and Southern Philippines. And even those who are attending the Mass online may give your help for our brothers and sisters through um, bank transfers or through GCash and PayMaya. All the collections that we will gather today will all be given to our brothers and sisters who are needing help. Let us be generous in, in our giving for our brothers and sisters. Maraming salamat po. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as He filled with His power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold Him, the Virgin Mother longed for Him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of His coming and proclaimed His presence when He came. It is by His gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of His Nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us now pray as Jesus taught us.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's Nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyo sa pagdalo sa ating misa ngayon dito sa Manila Cathedral. Kahit na umuulan ay nandito kayo uh, upang magdiwang ng banal na misa. We also thank those who are joining the live streaming of this Mass. Thank you for participating in our celebration. And we also thank the servants and the staff of the Manila Cathedral assisting and serving at this Mass. We continue to appeal to you for our brothers and sisters who were affected by the, the typhoon that uh, passed through Central and Southern Philippines. As I mentioned earlier, all the collections and donations that will be sent to us online for today will be all be given to the dioceses of, uh, our, of, of these affected areas. Kaya after po ng Misa, pagkatapos ng Misa, para sa ating mga kapatid na nasa online, makikita po muli natin yung ating mga bank account details and QR codes para po sa inyong mga donasyon para sa ating mga kapatid. Nawa ay gawin natin itong paraan upang mapaghandaan nating mabuti ang pagdating ng ating Panginoon. We also wish to announce that on Friday, December 24, our Christmas Eve Mass will be at 8 o'clock in the evening. This will be presided by our Archbishop, Cardinal Jose Advincula. On Christmas Day, December 25, Saturday, our Masses will be at 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and 6 o'clock in the evening. On December 31, our New Year's Eve Mass will also be at 8 o'clock in the evening. And on January 1, New Year's Day, our Masses will be at 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and 6 o'clock in the evening. Please follow, like, and share our Facebook page so that you will be updated in our schedules and programs for this Christmas season. Maraming salamat po. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of His only begotten Son, and yearn for His coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with His blessings now and forever. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may He make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity now and forever. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when He comes again in majesty forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Amen.